Good afternoon. Welcome to this uh, webinar from uh, Hotel Rick India. So normally we do this webinars every Thursday, 3 to 4 p.m. and we try to bring you the goodness of Hotel Rick, generic topics, developer related topics. You know, we try to cover the uh, you know developer um, uh, base and then that's what we, uh, today we're back again with one of the uh, specific topics which is like if you have an Ajax based web application meaning ASP.NET Ajax based web application and you want to create Word Excel PDF or in, in general terminologies this is known as document processing. In your web application if you ever have a document processing requirement Today we're going to be looking at one of the APIs that we have uh, as part of our product UI for ASP.NET Ajax and then you can see like you know without uh, the requirement of Microsoft Office software on your server side you can generate Word, WinWord, uh, Excel or PDF documents. So that's what this webinar is all about. So let's get started. Uh, a little bit about uh, myself, if you have been a regular to these webinars, you would have known who I am by now. Uh, but for the rest of the folks, uh, my name is Lohit G and I work as a technical evangelist with Telric in India. I'm also a Microsoft MVP in the area of ASP.NET and IS. That's my official email ID. You can uh, write to me if you need more information on anything. Uh, that's my Twitter handle um, and those two are the uh, websites that typically you should uh, not take a look at. So kashipas.com is my personal website and telrichelper.net is a website where myself and my colleague we keep writing about Telric and then uh, you know these webinars, recap blog posts and all the stuff. www.telric.com that's the global website for Telric. Uh, you will pretty much come to know what are the products that we have in Telric you know. So this is like a, um, you know, a mothership for us so you can go there to know more about the products that we support. Well, let's get back to the agenda. Um, agenda is fairly simple. I'm going to talk briefly about our, uh, you know, suite or control suite as we call it. It's uh, Telric UI for ASP.NET Ajax. I'm going to just uh, talk about that so that you get to know wh where we are coming from and then what do we support. And then if you have never heard about it, you know, it's a good good time to actually go take a look at it and what it helps you to do with. And then we're going to be diving um, right into the meat of the webinar, which is like, you know, we start looking at how do you do word processing, how do you do sp spreadsheet processing, and then how do you do PDF processing. That's as simple as it can get. It's like a four-point agenda that we have today. Now, first, let's take a look at uh, our control suite known as UI for ASP.NET Ajax. So it's a control suite. It sits in your Visual Studio. It sits in your toolbox when you install. So that's why we call it as complete toolbox for Ajax applications. It's uh, using UI for ASP.NET Ajax is pretty much like, you know, you build ASP.NET apps for any browser and device in half the time. So that's the kind of uh, statement that we'd like to let you guys know that, you know, you can actually support all the browsers. So we, um, our controls work seamlessly across the browsers. You do not have to worry about whether it is support or whether it renders correctly on uh, browser X, browser Y, or browser Z. Uh, we have done that already, so all you need to do is just use it, drag, drop on your uh, page, set properties, set, you know, and then that's it, you're up and running. And one more thing that we are doing lately using our ASP.NET Ajax controls are, you know, making it mobile friendly. So we have adaptive controls wherein, you know, when you use the control on a desktop browser, uh, when the page is rendered on a desktop browser, it looks completely different. When the same page is viewed on a mobile browser, the control takes it all together a different look and feel, uh, basically to uh, you know make use of the uh, screen width or make use of the screen size that is uh, appropriate and then give the appropriate experience. So that's what we have. We have certain adaptive controls under our belt. Uh, like grid, grid is a great example wherein, um, you know, typically on a desktop browser, the grid is uh, X columns by Y rows or whatever it is. But when it comes to a mobile browser, we automatically, you as a developer need not do anything. We will automatically do all the uh, switching like, you know, oh, this is a mobile browser. Okay, I need to display it in a, some other way. So that's what we do automatically. And then we also have certain things like uh, page layout. Uh, many people don't know this, but they go with Bootstrap. But with Bootstrap, what happens is, whether it's a desktop browser or it is a mobile browser, you are sending the whole page markup. You know, remember, Bootstrap is a client side. So the, when you send everything, 
to a mobile browser, which in the first place you should not be, uh, then Bootstrap kicks in and then it sees like, oh, I am in a small screen, okay, let me hide XYZ and then it just hides. If you have to hide on a mobile screen, why should you send it from the first place, right? So that's the question. So we, what we have done is we, for ASP.NET AJAX application, we have created something called as RAD page layout. Using this RAD page layout and then device detection framework that we provide, you can control from your server side whether you should send a content or not. So that means you're saving the bandwidth. So like this, a lot of goodness are available in the, USP, uh, in the ASP.NET AJAX control suite that we have. From some of the key features, uh, complete set of fe uh, you know controls for 80 plus ASP.NET controls. Typically, um, all needs of a project are covered. Uh, we do provide seamless US across device and browsers. Mobile support is there. Responsiveness is available. We also are coming up with HTML5 based rendering. A lot of our controls are already speeding up HTML5 way of uh, the, the markup. Uh, we do compliant. We are compliant to standards and accessibility. Uh, what's great is we provide you 20 built-in professional grade skins. You don't like it. You don't like it. You pretty much uh, would have to, um, you know, you can create your own uh, theme. Well, 20 themes is actually too much, you know, uh, and we provide basically all uh, kind of uh, things like the office theme, uh, metro theme, uh, you know, like that. So you can pretty much select it. And we also have SharePoint integration and web parts available. So this is the 80 plus AJAX controls that I was talking about. And if you take a look at the um, control, uh, you know, se segmentation, we would like to talk about, you know, the, the scenario that your project would need. Basically, does your project need a data management uh, controls? Yeah, so there you go. So these are the data management controls we have. Does your, um, you know, project need some layouting controls? Oh, okay, there, there you go. These are the layouting controls that we have. The doc, the page layout, window, wizard, so like that. So what we have done is we have our 80 plus controls, but these have been kind of segment. We have put it into segments saying like, hey, uh, the broad segment under which these controls can come into. And all you need to do is, hey, I need a navigation control. Does UI for ASP and AJAX control have it? So you come in, you take a look at our navigation segment, and then you will see like there are button, menu, panel bar. So you pick what you want. So this is what we have in terms of the controls uh, per se. And then uh, this is available as uh, UI for ASP.NET AJAX uh, suite. If you go to www.telric.com, you can pretty much get more info uh, on this. We also have online demos for this. You just have to go to demos.telric.com, and you will have a link to ASP.NET AJAX demo. Take a look at it, uh, because I'm going to just focus on today's uh, agenda, and that's the word. So let's start with uh, word processing. So basically, word processing is nothing but I, in my project, I would need to generate a uh, you know Microsoft Word document on the fly and then uh, make it available as a download, right? So that's the uh, requirement. So what is word processing that we have under the belt of UI for ASP.NET AJAX suite? We this is a processing library. This is specifically word processing library. You can import, you can export to several file formats. Uh, rich document model support is there, which includes tables, images, hyperlinks, headers, and footers. And the APIs are comprehensive and they are easy to use, and it will uh, so which makes you uh, you know you can uh, generate and manipulate the documents very easily. Not only that, we also have a variety of built-in themes and styles. You can use them to style your uh, you know uh, documents, you know all those things. So now let's dive deep into the demos itself. So in the interest of the time, what I've already done is I've already created a. Um, application all I did was I said file new project and on my machine I've already installed uh, Telric UI for ASP.NET AJAX uh, suite so once you install that you will notice that let me get my zoom it I always forget so that I can zoom and then show it to you guys so when you install uh, Telerik UI for uh, ASP.NET AJAX control, uh, suite, you will get this project template. It says Telerik the Web Forms application. So what this does is it will create a standard vanilla ASP.NET Web Forms application, but 
add references to Telerik, uh, uh, you know, binaries, and then uh, make it ready for you to work with Telerik controls. So that is as easy as it can get. So all I have done is I've selected file new project Telerik Web Forms application and created uh, a, a, an application, and I have a master page. Let me bring up the master page. So in the master page, all I've done is, you know, a bunch of CSS, and then I just set the uh, set a header and then a content placeholder. And if you go to the default .aspx, first we'll be looking at generating the Word document demo. So let me increase the font size so that you guys can see it clearly. So as you can see, everything is empty. Uh, I've just placed a button, and the button says generate doc, and then it has a click event. Uh, if I go back to the code behind, so here's the click event. Uh, as of now, it doesn't do anything. As you can see, everything empty. I just set it up so that we can save some time. Uh, let me run this. And since it's uh, it's going to take some time to prime it up, so let me just give it a minute. There you go. So it's a simple layout that I've done. Um, don't worry about the top. So these are just the uh, rad navigation control that I have, you know, so that I this is like a uh, menu bar. And here is the button. It says generate doc. The title says generating Word document demo. So our idea is to generate a Word document on the fly. So if I click now, nothing happens. As you can see, um, it's empty in the code behind. So let's start with. Uh, Coding. So what we need to do when we say uh, get the document is like you know we have everything starts with something called as rad flow document. So uh, we give you a structure called as flow document. Basically, you use this flow document uh, object model, and then you start filling up things. We'll give you paragraphs. We'll give you line. We'll give you a text. Um, you know all those uh, facilities are available. You, what you do is on this object model, you just start fitting, fitting things, and then that's it. So I will say document is equal to, I will say create uh, document, right? So now what we'll do is we'll create the document. So basically, if you look at the create document method, all I'm doing is I'm saying rad flow document is equal to new rad flow document, and then we need to create an editor. So the document is basically the outline structure. It holds the whole document structure. Now, in order to keep adding, like, let's say, a text or something, so what we need to do is uh, we will have to uh, start putting up, uh, we'll have to use an editor. So this editor takes the document and then provides you all the editing capabilities. So what I'm doing is I create an editor, and to the constructor, I pass the rad flow document. And then, of course, what I'm saying is, hey, the editor, uh, the whole document's uh, text alignment should be justified. So I'm saying alignment dot justified. And then, as you can see here, and of course, what program or you know what demo? Um, there's no demo without a hello world, right? So, see, so what I'm trying to do is do the same thing. So I'm going to create an hello world inside the Word document. I know it's a very lame, uh, uh, you know kind of a demo, but yeah, let's get started with hello world. So the, all I have done is I said editor.insert line hello world. I'm returning the document. So now that is all it requires for you to actually create a uh, Word document, you know, as simple as this. So what I need to do is in order to actually export this to, um, you know, or, or send it as a, uh, a binary content, I will have to actually use something called as format provider. So rad flow document would give you the structure that is just to compose different pieces of the document. But in order to expose it uh, or in order to export that as a win word, you know, Microsoft Word document, we have something called as providers. I can actually uh, use this rad flow document and then export it into an HTML, export it into a CSV, sorry, a TXT, export it into an RTF. So different, uh, we have different format providers. Today, what I'm going to be looking at is I have instantiated something called as docx format provider. So what does this mean is this provider knows how to actually generate that open XML that is required to actually push out, you know, basically from uh, Microsoft Office 2012 onward. Uh, Microsoft has provided this, this open XML 
you know, it's following this open XML standard. So in fact, a Word document, if you uh, rename it to .zip and then unzip it, you will see like, you know, it's nothing but a bunch of XML files. So that's what we are trying to give you again here. So we are making use of that open XML concept and this format provider, the docx format provider knows how to export the rad flow document which contains a different uh, pieces of the document into that open xml format so that is all it is doing so all i'm saying is hey uh, you know create a new docx format provider because i have to um, uh, you know export it to docx format provider let's say i want to uh, export this to an rtf file maybe so what i can do is i can say like uh, let's say rtf format provider and then here I can say RTF um, and as you can see here these are the I just want to point you to oh, let me zoom it again if you see here it is saying hey um, should I put this using statement that's because the RTF format provider class is available under this namespace telerik or windows or documents or flow or format providers dot RTF so if I just do that let me bring it in so that's it now what I can do is I can export this particular uh, uh, rad flow document to RTF format so if I say RTF format provider That's it. You know, you just say RTF format provider dot export, and then it will export uh, the RAD flow document as an RTF document. So let's bring it back to DocX. Uh, we'll focus on DocX now. So uh, all I've done is use the memory stream, and then I told the format provider that you know I want you to export this RAD flow document into this memory stream, and then I'm taking the bytes out of it. Then what I will do is I need to send this out to the uh, response, right? So I'm going to say, hey, response, clear all the headers, clear all the content. You need to do this append header. You know, I want this to be downloaded as an att attachment. So you need to add this header which says content disposition attachment and file name is, let's say, exported file or hello world dot docx, right? And then not only that, you need to tell the browser what is the content type so that when you click on download button, it will automatically open up the corresponding uh, application on the system. So I'm setting the content type as application slash VND or open XML formats hyphen office document dot word processing ML dot document. So this is a big word, but yeah, you still need to give it. And then I'm doing a binary write of the uh, array, the byte array and I'm just saying response.end. So that's as easy as it can get. Uh, as you can see here, created a rad flow document, created the editor. In the editor, I just inserted a line called hello world and then written the document. That's it. Let's run this now. And let's give it a couple of seconds for it to prime because the code changed, so it's going to take uh, time to prime it. And we have the button. So, if you want, let me put a breakpoint here so that we see what's happening. So I'm going to click on generate document and my breakpoint has been hit. I'm going to get inside this particular document. So as you can see here, I have uh, created the rad flow document. I've created the editor, set the justification of the alignment and did an insert line, hello world, and then I have the document. So I'm going to create the format provider uh, export the document to the memory stream, get the rendered bytes, and I'll do the binary write, and then I'll do the response at the end. Now, here, if you see my browser, uh, sorry, but, you know, I'm just trying to showcase that, you know, uh, the browser has told me, intimated me that, hey, do you want to open or save this attachment? So, as you can see at the bottom, uh, I have the dialog coming up. I will say open. So now, as you can see, WinWord is opening because it's a docx, and let me enable editing. And there we go. So we have Hello World coming up in the WinWord document. As you can see, it just takes a simple set of uh, things to do uh, to generate a document, and uh, you don't need any uh, Office or any of the libraries. You just need our Telerik UI for ASP.NET Ajax. So let's spice this up a little bit, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a header. I'm going to add a footer, you know, all those things, a signature, I'll, I'll bring in a signature in all those things. So um, I'm going to say create 
header and I'll pass the editor. So let's take a look at, uh, uh, let me add the header. So in the header, it says, it's, it's as simple as the same what we did now. So all I'm doing is, I have an image uh, already included in images folder and then uh, it's a PNG file. So what I want to do is in the header, I want to put an image. So that's what I'm trying to do. So I grab the header based on editor.document.sections.first.headers.add. So, so there are the first section in any, in any document is actually a header. So I'm grabbing that first section and I'm uh, uh, and, uh, adding in headers to the, uh, I'm adding a header to that. Once I get the header, I'm just saying like, hey, um, editor, I want you to, in the header, add a, a paragraph. And then I'm saying setting it to the paragraph start so that, so that I can insert the image. All I'm doing is using a file stream to open up that particular image. As you can see, file mode, file mode dot open, and then I'm opening up the PNG file. And I'm saying editor dot insert image inline this file stream, the format of the uh, image is actually PNG and the size that it has to do is 660 by 237. Now that's the uh, size. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create footer. In the footer, I want to add a link to telerik.com, right? So that's my idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a footer. So in the footer, it's again, um, I'm getting the first section, so basically uh, the headers and footers are part of the section and then, then there is a, the, your body starts. So I'm saying get me the footers and then add a new footer. And then the new footer, all I'm doing is created a paragraph and I said the paragraph should be aligned right. And I move the editor to the start of the paragraph and then I'm doing a hyperlink insertion. So I'm saying telric.com, it should point to www.telric.com and then um, you know, all those other parameters that are required. So next, what I'm going to do is, let, let's run this and see what happens. There is a question which says, like, you know, ASP.NET AJAX is supported in MVC also. No, uh, ASP.NET AJAX and ASP.NET MVC are two different technologies. But what you can do now is uh, ASP.NET AJAX with 4.5 and above, you can create a, a web form inside a, a MVC, or you can create an MVC pages inside a web form. So that is there. Uh, but our like, binary is basically, uh, you know, catered towards ASP.NET AJAX, but you can actually purchase this license of AJAX and then there are very specific APIs for document processing and you can use that document processing in the MVC also. Now if I click on generate doc, uh, it's going to go here, let me do an F5, I'll go ahead. So now uh, I'm getting the hello world dot docx. Let me... And there you go. So the, the header now has my uh, image file. And then, of course, we still have the hello world. And we have the telric.com coming in the, uh, uh, you know, the footer also. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in certain other things. So uh, just as a last uh, thing, I'm going to create some instead of the uh, hello world. Let's say we are writing a uh, letters to somebody and then that letter needs to be downloaded so that uh, it can be printed. So the letter generation is automatic. So I'm going to do a some insert. I'm inserting some uh, bunch of code here. So what it is doing is instead of doing the boring uh, hello world, it is actually saying like, hey, dear tell recuser, we are happy to introduce you to this blah blah blah, and then um, uh, you know the the bold, the italic underline. You know you can do all these things. You know all those things. So this is a bunch of uh, it's a letter auto generated. You know, you will have uh, typical uh, scenarios like this where a letter needs to be auto-generated. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my signature. So the so signature is nothing but I need my, uh, if you see here, oh, give me a second. So I'm going to say create signature and pass the editor. And let's create the signature here. So let me tell you what I'm doing in the signature. In the signature, I create a table. So this is, this is what I wanted to showcase. Like, you know, you can actually create a table. So also at, at the, uh, within the, uh, your document. So I create a table and uh, 
this is a signature table and I've said like, you know, insert table, uh, one row and then two columns. And then for the row zero and then cell zero, I've, I've created a border and, uh, you know, given a bunch of border things. And then uh, what I'm doing is I'm getting a image and then I'm putting it into the uh, starting uh, section. So if you see here, editor at insert image line, and then this is actually the Telerik logo. And then in the cells of one, that is a second column, I want to put my name. So what I've done is I've said insert text Lohit, and then I've said insert text technical evangelist. So now if I run this, you will see a fantastically crafted uh, Word document with all the you know body uh, right. It's like a real world uh, ref reference. Uh, it's like our support, or I'm sending a letter to somebody, uh, you know, explaining them about uh, document processing. So if I open it now, there you go. If you can see here, it says Dear Telric User. So there is a Telric, uh, you know, big logo coming up on the top. This is the uh, header portion. If I double click, notice it says header, and then I can click outside, and then uh, the header. Uh, editing goes away, and then you have the, all the word the wordings coming up here. It says data recuser. We would like you introduce to rad words processing component for you know so and so, and uh, we hope you will enjoy rad word processing. Yes, we do happy coding. Kind regards, Telerik. Here is the logo, small logo, and then here is my name, and then here is the um, you know my whatever I put up there, and then of course our footer is already there. So this is uh, one way of uh, generating the uh, document. Next, what I want to showcase is mail merging. So let's assume uh, you are you have a scenario wherein they say like, hey, we have a bunch of users uh, in the back back end, and then we need a document to be uh, uh, generated, which is like each page in the document needs to have uh, you know that particular customer's name, and then we should be able to take print out, and then you know it should be like the, uh, letters written for each one of them. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, now I've already created a page called Mail Merge. So again, it has a uh, doc button here, and this button is nothing but it's saying Merge Document on Merge Doc, and then all those things. So I'm going to go back. And then uh, I'm going to just explain it in the interest of the time. You know, I can, if I start coding this again, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll lose the time. So if you see here, the document creation is the same. It doesn't change. I have done the same stuff. But while creating a document, what I have done is instead of saying, dear user, notice what I've done here. I say a merge field a particular text. I've said merge field, a particular text. So the first name and last name are supposed, are nothing but a field which will have a value at runtime. So that's why it says merge field, you know? Um, that is what we are doing. And then not only that, I can actually introduce something called as doc variable. If you see here, I said regards, and then doc variable sender, right? So this is nothing, these are two different things that we allow you in the mail merge. So you can create a merge field. So now how did I, how do I use it? So rest of the things are the same. I've just used the insert text, uh, insert underline, you know, all the insert paragraph, all those things are the same. But where it changes is, if you notice the code here, after I create my document, if you see here, we use document has a method called mail merge. We use that mail merge, uh, uh, you know, method or utility. I'm passing in a list of person. So if you just, if you take a look at my get recipients, it's a simple person object that I've created. And these are all the different um, you know, sales reps in uh, Northwind. So I've used the same name. So here's the first name and last name. So it's uh, Nancy Devalio. So if you look at the person object, so the person object has a first name property and the last name property. So all I'm doing at runtime is fill up, build a list of this person object, uh, use a, create a list and pass this list to the mail merge method. So what I'm getting again is I'm getting a, a mail merge document and then I'm saying, uh, hey, uh, in the mail merged document, there is a variable called sender. I want that sender property to be filled with this particular value called low hit GN. And then I'm saying update fields and that's it. After that, saving document is as simple as what we did uh, last time. That is, take the rendered bytes out of it, uh, to an array and then call the binary right end in all those things. So remember how many uh, users we have here? We have close to nine users, three, six, nine. So now if I run this, 
So in the mail merge document, I'm going to go and click on merge and notice that the Word, uh, Word document is opening now. And there you go. So we have first page addressed to Nancy Duvalio. Second page is addressed to Andrew Fuller. Third page is Janet Levering, Margaret Peacock, Stephen Buchanan, Michael Suyama, Robert King, Laura Kalam, you know, and then Anne's Dodgeworth. So what I did was with just a, a list of uh, person object, I've now been able to actually uh, create a mail merge document. You know, you can print this. You'll get a nine uh, pages, right? So that's what this is, the mail merge concept. Next up, what we'll do is we'll quickly uh, look at how to generate a spreadsheet document. So if you see here, I have a page called Generate Spreadsheet Doc. And let's give it some time. So here's the concept. So what I'm going to do now is I want to uh, generate an Excel spreadsheet of my product stock report. You know, let's, let's create a stock report for a product. Uh, what you're seeing now is I'm connecting to Northwind database and then I'm bringing all the products uh, on the page. Maybe the administrator wants a stock report now. So he's looking at the stocks. So you can see that there's a unit price, there's a units in stock, and there's a product name. So he, he, would, he would want to take an Excel sheet uh, so that he can keep a track of something or he wants to print uh, uh, you know, uh, that particular stock report or something like that. So now let's take a look at how do we do this uh, Excel sheet generation at runtime. Right, so I'm going to stop this particular and let me open up spreadsheet generation at SPX and then uh, it's a simple, I have kept our RAD grid. So let me show that. So here's a RAD grid, it has a name and uh, what I'm doing is I've uh, created a couple of columns here, product ID, product name, unit price, stock then there is a specific event it fires. It says like, you know, it fires an event called on a need data source. So whenever it needs a data source, it will fire that event. So I'm trapping that event. And what I'm going to do now is on that event, on need data source, I'm just creating something called, uh, I'm setting the data source. And here's a get products code. All it is doing is I already set up an ADO.NET entity data model, so uh, I'm just calling context or products or to list, and it gets bound to the data source, and then you get the data source filled up. Now what I want to do is, I want to generate an Excel sheet of all those products with the product ID, product name, and uh, units in stock, and the unit price, right? So first thing that what would, we would need to do is, we will need to create a workbook, So I will say create workbook, just a helper method. So here, first thing that I'm going to do is, we have, as part of the RAD spread uh, processing, we have this workbook uh, object. So again, I'm just creating a workbook object, new workbook, and then to that workbook, I'm adding sheets. Uh, to the sheets collection, I'm adding a new sheet of the type worksheet. And then I grab the active worksheet. So as of now, I have only one sheet. So that one, the first sheet will be the active worksheet. Now what I want to do is I want to add a header to that particular uh, Excel sheet. So what I want to do is the first, there are four columns actually, the product ID column, the product name, unit price, and units in stock. And I want the first uh, row to be spanned across or merged across those four columns and then have a single value which says stock report. So what I did was, I said uh, cells from 0, 0 to 0, 4, I want it to be merged. So I think I have only three, so I'll say three. So I want it to be merged across and then in the 0, 0 cell, I'm saying set a value called stock report. And then, of course, all the headers have been put up. I'm saying, hey, uh, 1 comma 0 is hash, 1 comma 1 is product name, 1 comma 2 is unit price, 1 comma 3 is units in stock. So I prepared my header now. Now let's build up the sheets as the cells, right? You know, I want to go grab the products again. Um, so current row that I'm starting at is uh, row number 2. 
I go get the product and it's as simple as setting all the cells to a value. So set value to product ID, product name, unit price, units in uh, stock, and then current row. And next what I want to do is I want to tell the sheets to be auto fit. Like you know, you, you typically in an Excel sheet you will go and then double click on the uh, row uh, grips and then when you double click on the row grips, the row automatically fits to the whatever data is there and then it automatically fits in terms of the width. So I'm saying, hey, worksheet, the number of columns that you have, uh, each column uh, set the uh, you know, auto fit width uh, to be true. And after this, I would have to return the workbook, right? Now, so we have written the workbook again. It's a simple, similar thing. I need to create a format provider. So now, instead of the docx format provider, we have something called as iWorkbook format provider. Uh, it's an interface, and then specifically, since I need to download this as an Excel SX, the uh, uh, Microsoft Office 20, uh, Excel 2013 version. So I'm saying Excel SX format provider, and uh, again rendered bytes take a memory stream, use the format provider to export the workbook to the memory stream, then I'm, I'm taking the arrays from the memory stream, and then all I'm doing is doing a response dot output, right? So now, let me run this. So as you can see, we provide you a object model which is much more comprehensive and then which is much more easier to follow through. Uh, you're just setting cells, you're just setting a bunch of things on the cells, setting a value, each cell has uh, styling available, each cell has a border of things available, you can set a formula on the cell and all those things. So now I'm going to click on generate spreadsheet. So it's spinning now, it's going to take a moment to generate the Excel sheet. Since we are running it for the first time, so it has to you know, prime it up. So there you go. So we have, uh, it said, hey, here's a file that's coming through. So I'm going to say open. So it's doing a security scan now. And we have Excel uh, opening up. And there we go. So we have generated an Excel sheet with, remember I did a merge across uh, the four cells. So that's what it did. It actually merged, uh, you know, A, B, C, D columns. I said 0, 0,3, so that's it's it's all a zero based index. So uh, the stock report is there, and then uh, I have hash, product name, unit price, units in stock, and then notice that the columns have been auto fit. Now you may ask me like, hey, this is fine, but what do we do for the? I want to know the sum of this uh, uh, you know, units in stock. Uh, so how do you do it, right? So remember in the Excel sheet, what you normally do is you will typically say is equal to sum of let's say D2, uh, no, D3 colon D79, right? This, this is a formula that you normally do and then take a look at what happened. It says 3119 and then it's actually, if I double click, it's actually from D3 to D79. Well, you can do the same thing. So in this case, I'm gonna use hard-coded numbers like D3 and D79, but in real world scenarios, you can do a mathematic calculation as to, okay, what, where is the row starting, and then where is the row ending. In, in my case, if I take the items count, I know what is my last row, and then I can just play around. But just to show that you can do this, I'm gonna be hard-coding the values now. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, where's my create workbook? Yeah, here, after I have done, this particular, let give me a second. So you can actually ask for directly worksheet. Oh, let me stop it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, worksheet dot cells. And I know what cell I'm in. Uh, I think I am at 80, comma 3. Dot set value. So here, what I'm going to do is I don't. I'm not going to do a calculation, uh, which in fact you can do it, but that's that's not the point here. So what I will do is I will say D3 colon D79. And that's it. So 
what I have done is I've just set a formula on, okay, I missed a brace here. So I've set a formula here and I'm saying is equal to some D3 colon D79. So similarly, you can set up any formulas that you want from the cell itself. And now if I, uh, un let's see if we can do some things. So what I'm going to do is worksheet dot cells and I will say one comma zero comma one comma three dot set uh, fill new gradient fill and what does it need? It needs a gradient type dot horizontal then it needs the colors uh, it needs a color so I'll say colors dot let's say dark blue and colors dot dark blue so I'm just sending a bunch of, uh, you know, I'm just beautifying the thing. So what I've done is I've, I've taken a range. I've said like, hey, cell starting from 1 comma 0 till 1 comma 3, uh, set fill, meaning set a background color. Similarly, I will say I want, instead of set fill, I want to do a foreground color. Set for color, uh, it needs a themable color. So I will say themable color from RGB, ERGB, it's uh, 255. I want a white color. So I will say 255, 255, 255. And what now will happen is the header row will see a, a dark blue background. Uh, did I miss something? No. So you'll see a dark blue background with a, a white uh, text color. And then we'll have this worksheet cells uh, 83. Uh, if I want, I can actually go ahead and then say like, hey, um, I can do the same stuff. That is, let me copy this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is 80 comma 0 till 80 comma 3. And there you go. So I set the same background color, uh, you know, as that of the header for the total row also. So now if I run this, we should see uh, the Excel sheet coming up with that uh, sum automatically. So let's give it a minute to for the page to load. And we have the page coming up. I will say generate spreadsheet. And there we go. We have the file coming download. Uh, file is getting downloaded. So we should see Excel opening the file now in a moment. And we have Excel coming up. And let me do an enable editing. And there we go. So the header row has a dark blue background and uh, product name, unit price, units in stock. And if you come and notice the, okay, it has taken 81. So that's, um, I think, zero based index. So I should have said 79. So there you go. Uh, we are, it has taken like D3 to D79. So if I do this, so it does. And then the uh, total row. Uh, also has this dark background color and then foreground is white in color. So like this, uh, you can pretty much, you know, uh, it's up to your, uh, what do we call, uh, you know, creativity as to how, how, how the report should be generated, but we give you all the facilities to do that. Now, in the interest of the time, what I'm going to do is uh, for the PDF processing, I'm going to run our online demo. Uh, let me get that. So if you go online, demos.telric.com, uh, we have this um, complete, uh, you know, the word processing, spreadsheets processing, and then PDF processing demo. So here's a overview demo where, you know, uh, on the fly, we are creating a PDF document. I've clicked on download document now, and it's going to open up a PDF document now. And uh, there we go. So this is what you are you're seeing now is actually a PDF that, has, that was generated on the fly at runtime. Uh, so it has an image, it has a paragraph, and then uh, you know it, it's able to do a lot of uh, things like coloring a very specific thing, underline, uh, italic, italicizing the uh, text, and all those things. So how was this done? Okay, let me get this guy out of the way. So if I have to take a look at the codes, basically again we give you a rat fix. So here 
uh, we call it as a RAD fixed document. Remember, we had a RAD flow document. Then we have the I workbook. Uh, we had the workbook for the sp uh, spreadsheet. For PDF, we have RAD fixed document. And uh, you typically, so in a PDF document, what happens is you have uh, pretty much pages. So you keep on adding pages. So you set the page size. So in this case, we are sending it to 600 by 750. And then, of course, we need to uh, also have the editor to do all the you know uh, sections of the document. So in this case, it's a fixed content editor. And uh, you, you saw an image on the top. So what we are doing is we are, again, using a file stream to open up the uh, a PNG file, and then we say editor draw the image. Here is the stream. So we give the stream, it draws the uh, editor, and then with PDF it's completely different. You know, you need to with PDF what happens is you need to make sure you know your uh, offset. So you need to keep calculating your offsets. If you see here, we have the current top offset set to 110, and then we do some uh, translations. We set the font size to 14. Then, then we calculate what's the max width we are uh, we are having in terms of like you know if you see here page size width minus the indent, then we have a description being drawn and then you have to calculate based on like you know uh, what is the offset and then you keep placing that. So that's typically how you do uh, with a PDF document and we give you blocks. So in PDF, it's all about blocks. So in a block, you create a block and then using that block you insert a text. Uh, you create a block and then you insert a paragraph, you know, like that. So typically, what we are doing is create a bunch of text uh, like this, and finally you will be able to, and then take a look at this. So we are draw, drawing graphics uh, on top on, in the PDF. So if you see here, graphic properties and then uh, draw ellipse. So we allow you to we allow you to do all this uh, graphical things like ellipse, rectangle. So if you see here, I'm saying like draw an ellipse. Starting from 0 0.250 to 70 with this much uh, width and uh, you know, radius and all those things, and uh, that's pretty much it. So we we do a lot of things like that, um, do all the path drawing and all those things, and again you will need to have the uh, provider. So there is a PDF format provider, and you again get the bytes out of it. So you will take the document, provide the document. To the PDF format provider, and you say, "Hey, export it to a memory stream." From the memory stream, you get the array, and then you typically set the content type to application slash PDF, and uh, you just render it. So that's how it was able to, uh, you know, output the uh, what do you call the uh, the PDF document. Another way, uh, one of the other features is like you know, you can also do charting. So if you see here, uh, this is actually our RAD chart. And I can click on the download document. Now, when I open this document, you will see the same uh, chart being output to the PDF. All right. So let's see how that was done. So if I take a look at this, uh, what we have done is basically there is a column chart. As I said, it's a rat chart, and then we are given the products to that. And while exporting, we just uh, If we create the rat fixed page, then editor is there, and then everything. And then if you see here, we are drawing the uh, the base 64 string is actually we our rat charts have this capability to uh, provide the whole chart as a base 64 string. You know that's one way wherein you can embed a huge image as a base 64 string. So the, we are doing nothing but uh, just that. We took the base 64 string value out of our chart. And we just said, hey, convert that into a binary data, you know, binary array. And then we are just writing that binary to the uh, memory stream. And then finally, we, we know it's an image. So uh, we just draw that image uh, on the PDF uh, editor. And that's it. So that's how you are able to get the, um, the chart as an image in the PDF, right? So this is possible due to our chart's capability to export their whole chart value as a, um, a base64 string. And as I, as I said, uh, it's basically you get the, when you download, you will get the same, ch the chart exports this whole as an image in a base64 format. You draw that on PDF, and then when you download the PDF, you have the chart coming up there. So that's uh, pretty much what we have as part of our, uh, so yeah, we saw the spreadsheet 
processing, we saw the PDF processing, uh, you know, import export to PDF format, support for images and shapes. It has easy to use API for document generation. So pretty much that's the, uh, you know, content that we had for today, a very simple, uh, you know, as I said, it was just a three, three pointer agenda for today, where we wanted to showcase that if you already have Telerik UI for ASP.NET Ajax, you have these wonderful uh, APIs which you can use for any document processing. Uh, you saw me generate a Word, you saw me generate an Excel, you saw me generate a PDF. And as I said, there are much more uh, deep demos available on our demos. When you download uh, our suite, you also get these demos so you can run it from your machine. So uh, with that, I would like to say thank you for each of you for making it to this webinar. Uh, we will be stopping the recording and then we'll continue with the uh, Q&A for that. So thank you very much and we look forward to you, uh, you know, joining us again for a future webinars.